in 2018, hopefully you'll remember, we started the conversation. And in 2019, we continued the conversation and raised awareness about ethnicity in the workplace. In 2020, we want to make this the year of action where we take positive action to make RBS a great place to work. So first of all, it was a fantastic debate, incredibly professional speakers. I think it really gave me an insight into um, a, a real sort of the challenge, the systemic sort of cultural generational challenge that faces minority groups in, in Britain in the workplace and I think it opened my mind to that. Such a great event this evening. I was blown away by the quality of the people in the room. Uh, through the networking beforehand, but also just listening to the quality of the debate. We talk about a war for talent and, of course, for organisations like ours, the real trick is to how you access that talent. And tonight, uh, what we had in the room was a really high calibre of individual and really high calibre of debate. I personally found the debate incredibly insightful in terms of giving me a bit more sense of some of the structural challenges that people from a different ethnic background face and some of the perceptions they have of how indeed to interact with senior uh, people that come from a background like mine. I found it an extremely thought-provoking session, um, uh, really, really articulate arguments on both sides of the debate. Today I intended a fantastic um, session sharing about how we can improve the workplace um, and how we can break down some of the stereotypes and barriers that some of our colleagues from a BAME background have. It didn't really matter which way the debate went, it sort of just filled my mind with sort of inspirational thoughts about how I can drive more diversity within, within my own business as part of the RBS group. I thought it was a really interesting conversation and the arguments for and against um, both posed thought-provoking arguments. In terms of the content, I think the, the, the debate format was perfect because on the one hand, we didn't walk away from the issues. People were really calling out centuries and intense decades of, um, of discrimination and institutional racism, which we can't ignore. But on the other hand, you've got a huge amount of positivity. So it was so good to get the energy in the room of people who believe that change can happen and change can happen quickly. Well, I thought it was a fantastic debate. I think we want to create a culture where we can have such debates and we have that psychological safety um, to be able to have those conversations and debates as well. So overall, I could see the arguments for and the arguments against, but I thought it was overall um, some fabulous points that were made from, from both sides um, as well. The debate, it was awe inspiring. Um, you can see that there's a debate, uh, an argument for each side. The debaters were among the best I've seen. The proposition, I agree with them that I don't think the pay gap will end in 10 years, but the opposition won the day for me. They had more, they were more factual, they gave us a bit more hope, and I think hope is always something we can take with us. My background is that I run a UX design team where we have to be diverse in every aspect of what we do. We're designing websites and apps that are going out to the public and that public is obviously as diverse as the UK is. Um, so it's key for me to learn more about diversity in what we're doing um, and then building my team up to make sure it's also diverse because diversity will therefore help when we're designing the applications. Lots of examples of where we're seeing transformation. So I took from it uh, a really balanced conversation that is aware of the challenges but is still nevertheless really positive about change. We know that uh, we have gaps, capability gaps, and we know that in graduate population there's a high proportion in London of fantastic fame talent and we sometimes struggle to attract that. I think this evening I've taken away not only some great networks and some, some great contacts, but also a challenge to double our efforts in looking in places that we wouldn't ordinarily have looked at to, to address that talent, uh, but also continue that conversation internally and really intensify the, the level of conversation we have to, to unearth the challenges that people from diverse backgrounds are facing in, in the workplace.
I was particularly interested in sort of how it made me reflect on things from a personal perspective. Um, I think if I took one thing away from the session, it was more <clears throat> about making sure that I'm brave and that I don't avoid the conversations that need to be had um, and making sure that, um, you know, that those uh, issues are tackled head on. So I found the debate super helpful, um, especially hearing both sides around whether or whether or not um, we would meet our BAME targets by 2030. And I think for me, taking it back to my business, um, I'll take some of those statistics and some of the learnings that I learnt from both sides to really challenge my team and challenge the thinking. I'm looking forward to knowing more about what we can offer back to the community here. Um, and I think that's a great event to be at. Um, really good to see that progress that we're making um, but I really think there is a, a big challenge over the next 10 years where we can reduce the pay gap for um, BAME colleagues um, but also where our future leaders are going to come from from a BAME sort of background um, but really proud to be part of this group and the work that we achieve and um, really looking forward to, to growing and supporting BAME colleagues and um, further their career going forward. It may not be closed completely, but I think what I've learned from the debate today is that there is potential, there's actions that can be taken by all of us to reduce the gap. So for me, the debate, number one, opened up lots of conversation and I think it's one of those areas where actually people are most uncomfortable to talk about. So the fact that we've started to have the conversation, the fact that we've actually started to overcome those uncomfortable moments, for me, that's the one thing that I'm going to take forward. Let's get really comfortable about having these conversations and not be afraid to say what's on our mind. Um, I think for me, it's around um, that positive action that we can really take individually as a network, as a business, to really see positive change and make RBS a great place to work and a more inclusive place to work. So really great debate and some really actions that we can take, I can take personally to, um, to make a difference. What I'd really like to do is take some of the ideas and challenge the leaders in our business. I want to see real change. I want to see a step change. I want to see people feeling comfortable to have these discussions. I want to see people not just mentoring employees, but I want real sponsorship. I want talent to be recognised and to be rewarded. I'm going to take back that there's people out there who haven't experienced racism in the workplace and we don't need to present it to them and we're going to move forward in RBS. So to create a culture where people can bring the very best of themselves into work and also fulfill their very best potential in their careers. To be open, to be honest and to have fun and to listen. Diversity isn't just about the colour of your skin. Diversity is about listening, respecting and making sure that everyone's able to bring themselves to work every single day. We really believe that the strength of the bank lies in the diversity of its people.